Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Box, the technical trader at thetechtrader.com. It is Saturday, the 29th of October. This is the weekend webinar. Very eventful week and a positive one technically. Let's take a look at what we've seen so far over the last, you know, this year so far since January, since the very top beginning of January when the market was uh, on the S&P 500 was trading all the way up there at about 48.18, and then had a one, two, three, four big five wave drop, which culminated in a spike down reversal from 48.18 to 34.91. Um, 1,350 points, something of that nature. That's a big, big drop. We're talking about 30% or, or more. Anyway, um, since then, the big reversal bar, three-day run-up, a couple of days of consolidation, and then reversal bar, an engulfing reversal bar there. Three-day run-up and another two-day pullback. And then a nice engulfing reversal type bar on Friday when the mar NDX, excuse me, S&P went from 3808 to 3905 100 nearly 100 points and closed at 3901 over 3900. And that not only that, but it was closing over the 50 day moving average for the first time in a couple of months. The next target would be a run up into the gap area. And that comes out about 4035.37. We, we could draw that line right there, 4035.37. And and then beyond that, my, tar my target would be a, a text of that level at 41, let's call it 1920. But that's the target zone. Uh, right now, it looks like a long one, two, and this is a wave three. I don't know if four has already been had or not, or we need to consolidate for a bit more, but eventually it looks like they can get it up to 4035 to 4125 in that area. So like, we'll have a lot of work to do, but the, right now the short term support is 3800, 3803. And then we'll see where we go from there, whether we need to do any deeper retracing. I do like that little left shoulder head and then right shoulder is kind of weak, but more or less it's a left-handed extended V pattern with a rising channel. The Nasdaq 100. Also a one, two, three, four, big five wave decline culminating in reversal, exploded from 10.4 to 11.87. In that case, about 630 points just that one day. And then a little pullback retest. And then finally, eventually, after a few more days, we went through the declining top line, broke the channel, rallied right back to resistance at the prior high near 11.660. The high in the NDX was 11.681 within 15, 20 points, not very nominal move up and then back down again. That tested the trend line and that Friday was an engulfing reversal bar. It took us from, oh, let's just say just short of 400 points and a nice close. Now, obviously still below the 50 day moving average, but and maybe an inverse head and shoulder forming. And what we're looking for for resistance is 11.660 there, 11.681 there. So something about over 11.68, my target's about 12,000. We'll see where we go from there, if we can get through there. And obviously Thursday, Friday's low and actually weekly low, all of them down around 11.1. 6580 range in that area. So three intraday peaks right there. That would be my support level. I'm eventually looking for a run to 12,000, 12, and we'll see where we go beyond that. The transportation index, interesting, um, came out of a declining top line and retested it um, a week and a half ago and then went vertical. And literally four days in a row, the transportation index went from 12 call it just under 12.4 to over 13.6 or 1,200 points vertically in four days and then a couple of days of stall right here. Friday was a little engulfing reversal, but almost engulfing, not quite. Let's just say the transportation index next week to confirm the S&P and NDX would have to get over around 13.6 with the target then up in that 14.3 range. And the small cap index, which I follow via the IWM exchange traded fund for the Russell 2000 index, um, you can see broke through the declining top line, broke through lateral double top re resistance and the 50, and then reversed and having an engulfing day on Friday alone, going from a low of 177.89 to 184 plus, and finishing near the high. Up 2.4% on Friday alone. As you can see, there is some resistance at the gap just ahead. It comes in about 186 and a half, followed by the 189.85 area, almost 190. But more importantly, the moving averages, the 10 and 21, are curling up and crossing over. 
and, and there's lateral resistance and now which is now support excuse me and 176 177 range so let's call 177 key 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 support it for multiple reasons but the target now 190 90 and a half and beyond that maybe 195 everything de depends but right now small caps are looking much better than they have in a long time and that completes a look at the four main indices that i follow what I want to look at is the underlying indicators. Well, look at this, McClellan Oscillator. Don't be scared by this. McClellan Oscillator got up to 200 on Wednesday and 31. That's the highest level we've seen right, all the way back here. Two years. I think that's a good thing. And you're going to wonder why. Well, the answer is at the ev beginning of every major big thrust of the upside and reversal and major low. We get a strong surge that takes us into that overbought area and then it backs and fills a little bit. We get some consolidation in the market, but the oscillators can stay up here for, you know, weeks at a time, like it did in here, for example. I just think that even if we pull back on the oscillator, we probably won't get below zero for a while. And that, that's, that's the hope here. Um, but more importantly, let's see how they consolidate. So let's look at the percentage of stocks that participated. <clears throat> Right now, from a low, I'm in the single digits just um, on the 27th, which is one month ago. That's four weeks. The T2106 was down under eight, under eight, and they're now 6166. One would think that would be overbought. Well, getting overbought is up in that 7580 range. We're not there yet. But of course, we've seen other peaks in this zone here. Again, though, the kind of thrust you see at the beginning of every major move. What about the VIX? The interesting part about the VIX is it never got to an extreme level. It got, we got to a level which has pulled back. Um, I've seen the market rally because we were oversold up here, but never really got to extremes like we thought we could see in the 40s. Right now, it's pulling back and pulling back dramatically, breaking, breaking moving averages and trend lines. And so I don't know how far down this comes, but um, the VIX is not at this point showing me that the market is showing apathy yet, but it will if it gets down around you know 18 to 22 zone. Right now, it's 25.75. The underlying technicals um, show that the market is doing what I think it should do, and that's get quickly overbought and now pulling back a little bit. But we'll see. Um, the uh, ETF that I follow closely, the three main groups, semiconductors, nice recovery. First time closing above that declining top line of the last two months. And Closing with an engulfing reversal bar near the highs. Your resistance is 199 and a half to 202. This peak here being 204.71. So let's just say 200, 204 is a real key zone of resistance. If you get through that, you're on your way to 215, 220, at least, in my, my opinion. A very promising engulfing reversal bar here with a big tail. Four day consolidation, and then we're trending upward. What about the financials? Boom, chakalaka. Look at that thing. Inverse head and shoulder breakout, now up for six days in a row after that engulfing reversal bar off the shoulder of what I call an inverse head and shoulders. Um, a spike above the moving averages. Note that they are crossing over here. This is very bullish. But it is at the gap resistance, 77 a quarter roughly. You get through that, you're probably looking at 83 for 84. That looks great. That seems to be leading the market. Although, if you look at the XBI, the biotech sector, first time we've closed below, above the uh, declining tops line and above the 50 at the same time, uh, going all the way back to probably first week of September. So to you know, about eight weeks, seven weeks. Your next target on that would be upwards of 88.90, 88.89 for starters. The LABU, which we follow closely and trade on the verge of a breakout and a big one. Should that get above 880? Sorry, 8805. I think we got a, a nine and three quarters and maybe 11 or 12 on our, hand, on our hands. So stay tuned. We'll see what that does next week. So that's a look at the um, indices, the underlying tacticals, and some of the main ETFs I follow uh, for the um, main groups I follow. But I also want to point out that some of the commodities are, are acting really interesting. Look at the USO for oil. Very intriguing pattern um, in, a, in a kind of a one, two, three, four. And I think there's maybe one more wave down, but 
hard to tell. This is right at the apex, so we'll have to be careful with that. What is the gush telling us? The gush is telling us that we hit a resistance level and backed off for two days. And I don't know if that's going to fall hard from here or not, but it did close a little bit above that line. So I'm going to say that Friday's low on the gush under 170 is a stopping point for me. Now, should it break out over the double top of 196, 198? You could see uh, 220, 240, et cetera. So this could be get really interesting. What about not gas? Well, it's been coming down in big time. KOLD has been running, which is the ultra bear gas. After hitting a low of 906 in several weeks, it's gone up to 2669. That's about two months. Um, reaching resistance levels as well, but it might extend. And if it does extend, we could see 32 and even 36.7. The boil has been getting hammered for a huge run last year. I saw boil go from 23 to 145. It came down, ran up again, got to resistance and failed, and boy, has it come down. Mid-August high on boil alone was 123. Here it is, 35. And that's off. $31 or low, $31 and change. So this looks ugly, but it's oversold. And this looks bullish, and I don't think it's overbought. Not yet, not really. So that's what the net gas looks like. You've seen, gold, oh, you've seen the um, oil, but let's take a look at gold and silver for a minute. Look, folks, is this an inverse head and shoulders right here? Left shoulder, head, right shoulder, yep. Did it close above the declining top sign? At least the one, this one I've drawn. But the key is going to be, for me to say that gold is in on a new uptrend, the GDX has got to get above 26, plain, plain and simple, with volume, and then take out 27 and a half secondary resistance to really tell me that it's on its way, and that's a reversal pattern. What about silver? Well, the AGQ ETF is quite sloppy, and I can't tell you. I'll leave it right there with those two. Um, if you're looking at gold, you always have to look at Nugget and JNAG, but here's the Nugget, very similar to the GDX, only not as solid. This is going to have to prove to me that it can get back over 29 three quarters with volume and start to run again. And that's my take on the commodity ETS for gold, silver, uh, oil, and gas, et cetera. Um, let's get to the charts. There's a lot to look at. And we'll start off with alphabetically with ABCL. Now, Absel, um, Absel was a buy right there on a breakout of the inverse head and shoulders. And it did nicely by running to target number one, pulling back in a beautiful wedge, getting very quiet near the apex, and popping again to target number two zone. It then came down in a falling wedge, broke out, and it's formed a little inverse head and shoulder or cup and handle, whatever you want to call it. Friday was a big day for it, up 96 cents, almost 9%. I like to look at this again. I may reinstitute a swing on it for a move to the 15, 16, 17 range. AEHR, HB likes this one a lot. Friday's reversal was, to me, and very strong evidence that stock has is going higher. And the reason I say that is it came back down to test the moving averages and lateral price support at a prior high there and held that zone and bounced. That was up $1.51 or 7.5% on Friday. Buying wasn't huge, but let's face it, if you see this stock over 23 and a quarter, it's probably going to be 26, 28, 30, et cetera. It looks really good to me. LDX, well, another biotech uh, that had a one, two, three, four, five-way move and then came down substantially, about a 0.37 Feb retracement near support. Starting to bounce, I think it's worth watching, keeping your eye on. AMLX, another strong biotech that keeps running, holding the long-term long intermediate trend line. My next target is going to be 40.41. AMPX, exploded and now it's pulled into a coil pattern for the last five or six days. It tells me with low volume that this pops again. We're going to see 13, 14, 15, 16, something up in that zone, very very much potentially. AMPY, an oil and gas stock that broke out of a base and it's got a rising flag. This was a negative engulfing bearish engulfing bar on Friday, so be careful. Stop is under eight and a quarter, upside target 11. Medical device manufacturer, uh, Apollo Endos surgery um if they're one two three four five wave decline it's reversed right back up again broken out there is some resistance here if it gets to six and three quarters i think a stock could head to the eight and three quarter nine zone a r r y with a nice inverse head and shoulders breakout got up to resistance zone pulled back substantially in a two-month orderly retrace but look at the action now 
seems like it's breaking out again. Watch this one for a pop over 18 three quarters. Then your target's 22 three or better. Actinium, something I just spotted. From the beautiful coil, and last week went vertical. Where the heck was I on this stock? I never I even looked at it during the week. And it went from seven to 10. Well, $10 is resistance up here. You get through that, you might see 12 and a half or even 14. Keep an eye on it. It's maybe starting with momentum, and even a little bit of pickup in volume. AVDL, uh, we spotted this one months ago when it was pop coil, and we said that look, look for the next move up to four and six, and it got up to four and seven, 63, and a one, two, three, four, five wave advance before the pullback. So basically, it's five waves within wave one, and then this is wave two. If we can get this one over six and three quarters, seven, six, eighty-five, seven. 685 will get me interested. Then I'm looking for 11. Restaurants starting to move. Some of them, BJ's restaurants had a big move off the 20 low, but it can't big drop as well. After moving down from 61 all the way down to 20, it rallied to resistance, pulled back, and broke out on Thursday and Friday. And watch this one going forward for moving to the 36.7 zone. Blue, which broke out of an inverse head and shoulders, and I put a swing on it, went to target number one, and then pulled back. Won the wedge and broke out, but it couldn't get through the high and pull back again. On an orderly decline at the trend line, it might be a buy right here with a stop under that zone, but looking for eight and 11. CALX, Calix came out of a falling wedge, ran up sharply, formed a two, three month rising pattern, and then had a breakaway gap last week on Monday. Taking it essentially from 58 and three quarters in two days to 75. Look at the last two days here, flagging in that zone. Telling me it may want to test the high, and I'm looking for a run at 80. CECE. -E. Nice break out of a V bottom right hand extended uh, or cup and handle type pattern. Broke out there. Should have been on that one. It wasn't. It went to the, what I would have had as a target near 10 and a half. Coiled and popped again to 12. Right now, based on this angle, the fifth wave isn't done. And if it is, goes up in that range, you might see mid-teens. Powerful chart. CELC, I like the long-term decline. Now, look how symmetrical this was here with the one, two, three, four, five. Fifth wave consolidation broke out, hit faked everybody, and they suckered everybody in at 28.9 and got it down to $5. Now, another V bottom with a platform. Watch this one. Keep it on your watch list for a move over 11 with energy. It could be a stock in the 15, 16 range at some point for a swing. CGC, well, I'm convinced the bottoming process is strongly underway and that the last two pops here and there are indicative of a stock that wants to turn around. But it isn't going to be a long, longer term play until it takes four and a quarter out with volume. That's the case. You'll see five and a half, six and a half, eight, et cetera. But wait for it. Notice that the moving averages have crossed, um, are moving up. The 10 and 20 when are moving up. The 50s flattened out, but it's got some sort of a wedge forming. I'm watching CGC for a move over the weekly high of 334, and then your target's four, four and a quarter, and five. Kohu, semiconductor manufacturer after a long decline, broke out big time. Friday was a major breakaway to key resistance. My next target's the 38.9. CPRX, another biotech that looks fantastic. The first a rising channel and then a breakaway move and a big one a pullback platform trying to break out here watch this one over 14 three quarters or move to 17 and 19. the aio what a move on friday not only that but with huge volume for this stock big declining pattern broken one two three four five wave decline breakaway gap moving average is curling up momentum target is four and a quarter 440 and then 5, 5, 15. The XCM. Well, this is really a neat company. And take a look at that long-term move. This is a split. Beautiful long-term move. Which you saw that stock, one, two, three, four, five waves up, and then three waves down. Only to reverse again, break out there, form a pullback consolidation. This is a big move. This in the last six, seven days, it's gone from 91 to 121. And Friday in particular, up 19%. <clears throat> on 9.4 million, which is a big volume for that stock. Your target is 134.5 and then 155.58.
EGHT with a big day on Friday broke out of a coil. Let's see if this begins another big move. It closed above the 50, above the decline top line. If it gets above the four and a quarter range, we might see a quick five and a quarter, five and a half. ELF, wonderful chart. V bottom with a right hand extension or cup and handle. Breakout, pop, pulling little pennant, and then stair step your way higher and a rising channel. Still looks good to me. Eventual target 50. ENVX, double bottom, breakout with a breakaway gap, run up to triple top and near 26 from a low in the 7 8 range. And then it took the last couple of months in a falling wedge, but it seems to have broken out. Keep your eye on this one. If we can get it over 21, we're looking at 27 30 range. EPIX just went ballistic on monster volume on Wednesday, going from 205 to 510, 150%, following through a bit, but stalling at that zone. Take a look at the triple intraday peaks here. So if we can get this about five and a quarter, I think you're headed for eight. EPOW, finally broke out of a coil, extended, got the target number one, resistance at four and a half, which we mentioned, and it's pulled back. I'm a believer that the pullback, which was on lower volume on Friday, um, could, could yield eventually five and a half and six and a half, maybe more. Personal position of mine. EQNR. B bottom and right hand extension and a run up near resistance, but that's the breakout point there. The next target, and that's key resistance at 39. ETNB, a beautiful biotech stock, coiled, popped, wedged, exploded, falling wedge, popped, flag, and it's running. Nice chart. My target is up here at 15. EXTR breaks out of a wedge last week and goes vertical in the last two weeks. It's gone from 1261 to almost 18 and broken key support, a resistance right there. Now, the way I measure this channel and the angle of ascent, it sure looks like the target has to be near 20. FNGR exploded and it went vertical like nothing on Wall Street, uh, literally from 60 cents to $10. In a couple of weeks, but it's it came down and pounced, and now it's coiling and narrowing near the apex. Very interesting pattern. Really, you need to see this above seven and three quarters, 85, and then take out 10. If you do that, the measure moves is insane, but it tells me it's a stock that could go into the mid to high teens even at some point. This is something that we'll definitely watch. For solar, well, been talking about the stock since this huge breakaway gap, and boy, did it run. It even did a head fake breakout there before pulling back down. <clears throat> On Friday, it dropped and popped. It went down to 120, I think it was 116 pre market, and then ran to 138, folks, closing 133 up two. Big reversal day, engulfing reversal day. High was near resistance, and one of the reasons why I may have backed off. But I sure like the way this looks. Your eventual move into the high 100s, maybe 170, 80. Gilead, how about that breakout? My massive base and through a double top with a spike up and a blow up, nine points, 13%. Only traded 28 and a half million. Momentum target could take it into the mid 80s. We'll see what happens. Hudson, been on my charts of the week, week weekend webinars uh, for over a year, and you can see why it just keeps going up the beautiful channel. There's a double top and target at 11, eventual target mid teens, maybe more. Mitchell IT, based out, broke out, flagged for five weeks, popped and then retested it at 50, right to it. And then it's been going vertical ever since from about 10 and a half, three quarters to almost 16, 15, three quarters near the top of the channel line. So it's overbought here. I just wanted to show you how strong this has been for a, a tech stock in a weak market. Very good relative strength. In the healthcare group, HROW is spiked and it's been flagging ever since. It looks like a setup for more upside, but there's a double top at 13 and a quarter area. And if it gets through that, I'll look for mid to high teens. Heart care exploded. And I mean, 26 million shares doubling on Thursday and then backed up a little bit, but held very well, even gaining another 12 and a half percent on Friday. 
So maybe setting up some sort of wedge or flag, but I like to look that this may be a bottoming pattern on this stock and could rise into the $3 range. IMRA doesn't get more bullish in this chart. A long downtrend, very tight lateral coil, breakaway gap with volume. This is the key. Two day run up, they got stalled about $2.45, 40 almost $2.50 coil. But here's a breakaway gap a week and a half ago. A little quick pullback pop, and now look at this stair step move. This is underway. Best way to look at this is probably an hourly chart. Let's take a look at it. <clears throat> and you can see what I'm talking about right now. Very powerful rising channel. Right there. Kind of closed out or just beneath it. Right on support right there. So in the hourly chart, if it holds here, your next target is five and a quarter and six. IMVT is another dynamite biotech stock with a double top breakaway move. Flag pop. Looking for extension of 12 and 13 and a half. Probable stop under eight and a half. MBX popped out here. We put a swing on it. It worked out well, five waves, and then fell apart. But boys had come back and now flagging again. Should or could be a swing with for a test of this zone up around 45. INMD, we put a texture rate swing on it when it popped, but it backed off in, on an inside day Friday. I still like the overall look. Huge move up. And really orderly move down, breakout, and a run up into resistance before pulling back. Looking for 40. Three and 52. ISEE exploded, pulled back and tested, ran up sharply, and it's been a rising channel ever since. The angles changed a little bit, but it's still very bullish. It looks like this now. Very tight rising channel. Look at it on an hourly. See what I mean? So we get out above here, this thing could accelerate into the mid 20s. Even as high as 28. ISSC, yet another, exploded, coiled, and popped. Two-day consolidation. I'm targeting a run at the $10 range, and if it gets through that with any energy, we could see 11 and a half. Keimer, a one, two, three, four, uh, truncated fifth wave short net resistance twice, and then came down. The pullback got down towards support and then snapped back. Moving average is crossing over. Keep an eye on it. It was up 325 on Friday. Next target is at 35 and 47. <clears throat> Mara. Well, the Bitcoin stocks have recovered and they platformed, but Mara broke out last week and tested resistance there. So the key is going to be for me next week. If this gets to uh, 1560, 65, we're probably looking at 19. And MCRB, another biotech, looking great, and it broke out on Friday with a pop of 126 or. 19% is vine picked up. Keep an eye on this one. Your target, 10 and a half. Mid-pace, exploded on Tuesday. Miss a breakaway move, and then followed through and pulled back. This consolidation has taken place is healthy, and it comes near resistance. So for me, I'm looking for a breakout above 236 and run into the 275 range. MGNX swing trade, broke out, we put a swing on it. It's backing and filling in here. Some resistance just ahead at five and a quarter. We get through that, we're looking for a six and three quarters and eight dollars. Those are my swing targets. MNTV, boy, I really like to look through this chart. Massive decline. V bottom, engulfing reversal bar, breakaway gap with volume, and then consolidating for a week. I like that. If, if it gets up through, and this is key, 815, then you can go for nine and a quarter, 10. Uh, nine and a quarter to a half, and then then three quarters, 11. MODN, really nice long rising channel. Just came above a quadruple top. I think it might extend. I'm looking for low 40s. MVST, microvest exploded off the low. This is, I think, an all-time low. Yep. But it did it with big volume, relatively, 49 million shares. And now look at the rising flag. I think it's got potential to pop and go. First target's three and a half, second target's four and three quarters. Nutanix, tech traded swing broke out. It's been flagging. I like the look. I believe I gave that to you here, around the 21-2 zone. It's made it up into the high 20s, reaching 27 and a half, but I don't think it's done yet. I think the angle may have changed as well. I'm looking for a move eventually at 32. And UVL Friday had a big day. 
five and a half million shares, a huge relative volume for that stock, and jumping 60% of the day to test its all time high just after the IPO last year. So let's see if that follows through. <clears throat> OII, that's Oceaneering, really gas stock with a right hand extended or cup and handle breakout, got the resistance, breakaway gap, got the secondary resistance there. And it's stalled right here, but any further upside, you're going to see 16 on it. Really good chart. Oh, I am in the semiconductor group. Must have been an earnings play, but it exploded on September the 30th. And ever since, it's been in a coil, but a bull coil. You can see the triple, quadruple top here. Get this one over 445.50. I'm looking at five and three quarters and seven. At six and a half. PACB finally broke out, pulled back, and then popped again. I think it goes higher. Get this one through nine. And a quarter, you're looking at 11 and 14. B A Y O. Good looking chart, folks. Kind of an inverse head and shoulders or a basing pattern breakout flag, pop, falling wedge, pop, flag. Target, 935, 11 and a half. PCG, a utility, but look at the big base it formed after the debacle with the forest fires. Anyway, at this point, having momentum, I'm looking for 17 three quarters. PDSP, well, it came down, broke out, and retested exact double bottom. Quite frankly, I'm looking for a move to about seven and a half, three quarters. Peggy, literally exploded from 60, 76 cents to as high as 7.54. Monster. And then the one, two, three. So for me, it's a beautiful pop. And a nice falling wedge. Keep an eye on it. As long as it holds this level around three and a quarter, the targets are five and three quarters, seven and a quarter, and 11. Perion. Strong earnings report. It extended. This is a tech trader swing. Already tested support and bounced sharply. 2270 to 2403. We get through that zone right up just above here, 26 and a half, and then we're off to the races to 3132. PI. Impinge really had a monster breakaway move two days ago and had a beautiful follow through there Friday. And for me, it's a stock that this is all time high territory. Eventually, should make a move into the one, let's call it 150 and 175. Pinterest comes out of the base, double tops and backs off and then reverses. This is a breakaway gap on Friday. As Pinterest popped 315 or 14% with volume of 46 million, the biggest in months. I'm now looking for a move to test this April high at about 27 and a half, 28. Beyond that, low to mid-30s. PLRX has been in a rising channel ever since we first discovered it post-breakout coil. From that level, it's gone from 16 to 25.6, and looks to me like at one point, this may accelerate blow into the 30s. PRBB, base breakaway gap and a beautiful wedge. Keep an eye on this one, looks juicy. Double top, triple top resistance there, seven and three quarters, eight though. <clears throat> That's your first target. Next target is nine and a half. ONGY, oh, QNGY with a mass, massive 111 million share traded on Friday and going from 130 to 449. It did finish way back at 308. Still a big day for it. Three, in that 3308 area was big resistance anyway. I'm not a surprise. Let's see what it does going forward. Something to watch. Rocket Labs. Long decline. Followed by a V bottom and a platform or a cup and hill, right handed extended V, whatever you want to call it. It's a one, two, three, four, five waves up, double top, and a one, two, three, four, five waves down to support and then bounce back up from the platform. Friday was a nice little mini engulfing day, and it looks to me like this is a stock that wants to break out and run into the mid 20s. Um, Rocket Lab, one, two, three, four, five waves declined to retest the prior lows in July, double bottoms, and then snap back. And this one has taken out initial. Resistance right there. Next target uh, 595, 6 and 7 plus. RPTX, V bottom with a long platform coil. Finally broke out last week. In particular, Friday was an engulfing reversal bar, jumping nearly a point or 7%. There's resistance right here if we get through it. I'm looking for 18 three quarters next. RVP exploded, three wave corrected, falling wedge, popped again, and now it's wedging again. And Friday was up about almost 10% in a wedge. So it looks to me like we can't have extension. And if we do, we're looking at five and a half and six and a half. Rhythm, one of our best trades of the year, went from literally from four and three quarters, five range where we gave it to you, 
just two months later, was training at 31. Amazing move and not coiling bullishly and not breaking down. If it pops here, looking for mid 30s, low 40s. Sava, one, two, three, and now wave four is on the way. Has to hold here, but supports 32 and a half. Resistance is 39. Get through that, you might see mid 40s, low 50s. Biotech silverback therapeutics. A one, two, three, four, and a five wave move, but the fifth wave is a one, two, three. And this is four. We may need to get this extended to seven and a quarter half. That's your next target. Seed, after spiking from September uh, in the eight and a quarter range all the way up to 1184, about three and a half points or almost 40%, the stock can then pull back right to support right on the trend line near the moving averages. So the ideal support is that this doesn't go into 990 to 10. And then once it spikes on volume, my target's at 12 and a half, three quarters, 14 and 16, 17. SGML, the strongest lithium stock there there is, as far as I'm concerned, a stock that's gone from seven to high 30s. Uh, yeah, I would think so. And it's so strong that it's accelerated beyond the long-term channel. And it might be in a blow-off state, but I see some upside in the 40s. Shopify. Might have reversed here. A one, two, three, four, five wave decline followed by a reversal bar. I run up to resistance and a pullback, but breakout of Thursday and a bit of a stall on Friday tells me this may want to try to test and take out 35 and three quarters. And then your target has to be up here at 4344. SLI, standard lithium. That too is reversed and broken out. You can see the breakout here through the chronic top line with a target now. Four and a half, three quarters. SRRK School Rock broke out of a long wedge on Friday with a pop of $1.65 or 21%. Looks like it's going higher. SRTS, a personal holding. By the way, seed was as well. Um, SRTS, one of the most loved stocks by one of my best institutional clients that I put a lot of credence on. And I'll, fundamentally, but technically, let's look at this chart. It's a long one, two, three, and four. The fifth wave should take us to at least 21, 22 zone. The longer term, much higher. STKL, the food company, popped out, wedged, and broke out again. My mid-range targets to 13, three quarters, upper range 18. It's DRO, another biotech with a pop and a coil and breakout at resistance here. Keep an eye on it for a pop above 720. That should get you to eight, eight and a quarter, and then nine and a quarter, three quarters. TAL, an uh, educational, Chinese educational stock with an inverse head and shoulders and breakout. That did well for us for a while, got to the target, but then came down hard with some of the other Chinese stocks. Support here was violated briefly, but the stock rallied really sharply. It's at the declining top sign, and it may need to consolidate, but any breakout would give me a target of five and three quarters. TERN, a low price biotech that exploded, had a three wave corrective falling wedge, popped again, tested the trend line. It's gotten squeezed in here to the point where it's at what we call an ascending bull coil. And any breakout could really get a big move. <coughs> My minimum target's going to be $10, believe it or not. TH, pop, three wave correct the flag, and then pop, multi month coil, and narrow near the apex. You realize if we get a fifth wave, it could be huge. Keep an eye on this one for moving to at least mid channel around 18. TOST, along with that declining pattern for this software stock breakout we had a swing on it here it worked for a bit pull back and then popped right to the target zone and backed off again in a falling wedge that falling wedge broke out and is now at lateral price resistance zone ultimate target 28.9 tusk a junior oil stock broke out of a downtrend there retested from the wedge and broke out right now the target's at 7 7 15 where this high is and then 11. Baru, well, we did very well with Baru, especially in here when it exploded into the mid 20s, but it's come down quite hard. Now it's forming a little base, so I wouldn't dissipate. And notice where it backed off Friday right at the 50 period moving average. 13, 13, 10 is resistance. You get above that, my target. It's 16 and a half, 18, three quarters, and then we're on our way back into the 20s. Verve, another solid tech trader pick. When it broke out here, we went long in the 17s. Eventually made it to 30. 43, and now look at the multi-month consolidation before the last week's pop and breakout. So my target is 
and then 54.5. Verona, nice breakout, pulled back, and it broke out again. Friday was a big day for it up 171. Targets now 14 and a half, 17 and a half, 18. VRT, a tech trader swing with a nice inverse head and shoulders, broke out last week. We put a swing on it. It's moved up nicely and backed off, reached 15 three quarters. Your support, about 13 and a half. Your target, 19. A little WVE, which was a big number at one point, way up here in the 50s, came all the way down in single digits. Matter of fact, down to a dollar 16 from 52. What a nice recovery. Coil broke out, and now this little wedge has me thinking it's going higher, but it's got to get about five and a quarter. Then you're looking at seven or better. XBI, we showed you earlier, that's biotech ETF it looking promising. And then Zixi, with it finally got the big pop I was looking for on Friday. That was the personal holding. I left my position on that pop. It moved from nine to 11, finished 1041. I don't think it's done yet. I think once he gets to 12.35, I'm looking for 15 still. That's it for the longs. There's just a few shorts to cover, and then we'll finish up for today. One second. Oh, this is a problem for me. Let's see. Hold on a moment. There you go. Okay, now I don't have a big short list because I've eliminated a lot of them because obviously the morality has taken a lot of them above their stop out points. There are some here, we'll go alphabetically. Align Tech, this is ugly as all hell. And I finally got crushed on Friday, like I told you, on Thursday, sorry. Having dropped from 229 to 176 in a day. Now folks, I've been telling you to be short this stock since it was trading in a, uh, you know over 500. So 500 down to 76 or something like that was a low, 176. Big, big drop. You know, always got to take your profits when you can. Amberella, um, this is still a bear flag, and I don't know how far they take it down, but it's, this thing's dropped from 225 down into the 40s and doesn't look done yet. It's pretty ugly. Possibilities are 43 and 35 if it keeps going. AVNT, broke down, snapped back, rolled over hard. That's a rising bear wedge. I don't like it. Um, I would stay short until I see it over 36.7 zone. CDNA. Remains in a big downtown, although it has rallied back to the declining top sign, and it's above the moving average. So I'll be careful on this one. I would say I'd be stopping over 20 and a half. SD Lauder, another big downtrend, dropped through the channel from a bear flag. Go from 320 eventually to 193. And um, I'll probably cover in that zone too. FERR breaks the top, forms a little bear flag. That's when I said short. Bear wedge, bear wedge, long bear pattern. Don't know yet, but I'm getting, I, I'm thinking um, m m there's better opportunities. Garmin, how about that little mini head and shoulder rising wedge, or rising bear wedge, whatever you want to call that. Bear flag, bear flag, bear flag, bear wedge, bear flag, and down goes for it. Just keeps going down. Finally reversed, finally. So, but you can see a lot of these stocks did that after being down devastatingly low. This stock dropped from 165 to 76. It's reversed, so you may want to think about covering. Horizon, I mean, it's still in a bear coil and has been for three months. It doesn't, it's not responding to the market. That's a good sign. However, it's a one, two, three, four, five wave down. Now this, so it could be a base. Got to be careful. Medfest, this is pretty ugly, folks. Breaks the bear flag forms. That little bear flag told me we go a lot lower. From 228, it's dropped into the 105 range. And now we got a bear flag. I don't know what to tell you, but the downside target is 82.83. Overstock looks ugly considering some of the Bitcoin stocks rally. This is not. It tells me something. If they take this pattern, this line down, it could drop precipitously into the high teams. Pentair looks ugly. Tried to bounce, pull back, bounced a little bit on Friday. Uh, I would probably cover my short. It's had multiple waves down. Robert Half finally got the spike down I was looking for there. We gave it to you originally at 99. And eventually made it to that spike down at 65 bucks. But this wrap snapped back quite sharply. So if you didn't cover at support and at my target at 65, um, then obviously you suffered a little bit of pain. CITM, SITM, sorry, head and shoulder top, and then the declining channel. And this accelerated when it broke down through here. 
to get down to long-term support and bounced. Sloppy chart. Now I'm out of that one. I would be if I were you. TREX breaks support, forms a little bear flag, another one, another one, and yet another one. So it's a stop over 52, but a target of 32. Teletech continues in a downtrend with very little bounce. Can't tell you where it goes because it's it's quite a bit off the lows, off the highs. I'd say 37. Upwork, beautiful downtrend, still in play, hardly bouncing. Tells me it's very weak. Eventual target, 11 and 8. And finally, Zoom video, although I like this company, I don't like the chart. It's been in a downtrend ever since it broke down from there. So you can see that drop from 275 down to 75, uh, or less, 72. If it breaks out here, I'd cover, but if not, the target 66 and 55. And folks, that's an exhaustive look at the indices, the underlying technicals, the related ETFs, commodity ETFs, a bunch of longs and some shorts. Um, I'm going to do a lot more work on the short side, folks, because I, uh, I believe that the market um, is telling me it wants to go higher. The market continues to climb on Wall of Worry. We'll see if that's the case next week, though. For now, have a great weekend. Study these charts. Be prepared, and I'll talk to you on Monday. This is HB from Orlando, Florida. Have been uh, wishing you a wonderful weekend.